Hi you guys, welcome back to another first impression video. This is the video series where I take a look at an entire sewing pattern collection and just like chat about it with you guys. I give you guys kind of like what comes to mind whenever I look at the pattern, the overall design, the fabric choice, the fabric recommendations that they give, um, any fit issues that stand out, all of that kind of stuff. So if you like looking at the pattern books in the stores with a friend, this is the next best thing. Some might even say it's a little bit better. <laughs> Today we're going to look at the Butterick Spring Collection. Looks like there's 16 patterns um, and very pastel. So let's jump into it. This first one is a Mrs. Dress and Sash, sizing 6 to 14 and then 16 to 24. Um, that might be... I, don't, I can't remember if Butterick goes down to a four or not, but this is very close to their entire size range. Um, it's described as loose fitting, tiered hem dress, have pointed collar, collar band, faced yoke, front band with button closure, and set in sleeves with an elastic hem. View A has a matching sash. All right, so kind of like a take on a shirt dress. It's from, you know, the thigh up, a shirt dress. Um, and then they just added some tiered ruffles to it. Button band all the way down, ankle length. This is the long sleeve version with the elastic cuff. And this is a short sleeve, well, half sleeve. This also has elastic in here, which is giving it that bubble hem. And it looks like they made this from kind of like some sheer fabric. Yeah, pretty sheer. Um, let's see. Okay. Okay. Here's the back. So we have a yoke. We have gathers. Yeah. They put a little slip under here and then just your, yeah. I mean, nothing super special about this. It is pretty. Um, let's see what fabrics they recommend. Charmeuse, cotton shirting, linen blends, novelty shears, and taffeta. Yeah, I think that if you're into like a clean polished look, but you want to do something a little bit fun and flirty, this might be a really good option for you. I also think that view A and B are the same length, but if you wanted to remove some tears or adjust where the tears start, there is some, some fun hacking potential here with this one. Um, so all you need for notions are, what is it, elastic and buttons. Yeah. All right. So finished garment measurements. There are eight inches of ease, seven and a half, eight inches of ease in the bust. And waist, there is, oh, good grief. 23, 30, 11 and a half. Okay. So oversized for sure. I would make this based on my upper bust measurement size down and then maybe size down again if you're in between sizes um this is very very loose fitting let me look at her version again the illustration is not showing that much ease i mean maybe because well, let me see the back of her dress again yeah she's pulling it in quite a bit but I don't know if it's that much. Oh, look at the shoulders. The shoulders is usually the dead giveaway that it's too big, but either they have pinned it up in the back where we can't see, or they made the right size for her because the shoulders do look really good. I just, I'm not sure that there's eight, seven, eight inches of ease in this. Maybe five, four or five, maybe would be my guess. But very on brand for Butterick. That is, this is Butterick's woman right here for sure. And so is she. All right, let's talk about this Mrs. and Women's cape top and pants. I've never seen a more Butterick pattern than this one before. They love this kind of stuff at Butterick. Um, so we do have Mrs. and Women's. That is a 10 to 18. Oh, interesting. And then a 20 to 28 women's, okay? A 20 W is not the same as a Mrs. 20. It has fuller bust for sure, 
Um, and then maybe some other, you know, changes that we would not know about. Sometimes they say in here that Mrs. is drafted for this cup size and women's is drafted for this other cup size, but there might be changes in the length. You'd have to buy both pattern pieces and lay them on top of each other really to see the differences. But if you are a Mrs. 20, 22, 24, 26, it's not going to be the same as buying one of these women's sizes. So this feels a little bit, I don't want to say it's, it feels like they're cheating a little bit. Yes, it's misses and women's. Yes, that's technically true, but it's a limited misses and a limited women's. So that feels, I don't know. I don't know how I feel about that. It's better than not having the women's sizes. But, oh gosh, I'm torn. Better than not, but they could still do better is where I'll leave it. Blind capes have stand-up collar, side front pockets, side openings, concealed sew-on snap closure and length variations. Loose fitting top has purchase bias facings, side slits and hem variations. Slim pants have grosgrain waist facings, waist darts, an invisible side zipper with hook and eye closure. I kind of love this idea of the grow grain waist facing. You don't see that very often. Um, that feels a little bit more like a Vogue feature. But we've got all these interesting style lines and your little arms peek out of here. Um, this does seem, <laughs> if you ever watched one of my first impression videos before, we talk about a cape. I'm always like, how do people drive? Like these are clearly like standing and walking only garments because you can't raise your arms to hold a steering wheel. So you're not driving anywhere. You're being driven or you're standing and walking alone. That's it. <laughs> but this one does have a pretty significant arm opening. So she could raise her arm, not all the way, but she could raise it a good bit. The pocket is hidden in one of these seams. I like that detail. And then it's a hidden button, button placket too which also gives us just a really polished look. Now, this satiny, I think what they did is crepe back satin, and I think the pants are the crepe side, and this is the satin side. If you're going to a wedding, if you're going to an event, absolutely, this is gorgeous, but if you're just going to brunch or something, this feels like a lot. Like, I don't go to enough events for this to be, like, to take up an entire hanger in my closet. So we'll look at some other fabric recommendations that they have, but what I'm dying to see is the top and pants without the cape on. Are they going to give us that photo? Come on. Okay, there's the back. That's also helpful. The back is actually really pretty. Nice shape in the shoulder for sure. Let's go, let's go. Come on, come on, you can do it. No! What does the top even look like? It's a tank top. We don't even see one photo of the tank top. Oh, that's just... That's just really unfortunate. I get that it's kind of like a throwaway pattern. Like, it's just a simple little tank top. But I want to see how that tank top fits. And because I have such trust issues... My assumption is if you're not showing me the tank top, then the tank top doesn't fit well or is ugly or something bad happened and you're just trying to hide it. <laughs> that's where my mind, that's where my mind goes with all the trust issues I have. Um, either way, I'd also like to see the top of the pants, which we never get to see. I'd like to see the pleating and the waistband and all of that kind of stuff, like not pleating, but darts. It's not enough just to show us, I guess they probably think this is the seller. This is the moneymaker. But if I'm buying a pattern that has three pieces in it, I'm going to have to love all three pieces. Because capes are nothing new. You can buy lots of different cape patterns. All right. So they recommend heavy satin, Mikado, and wool blends for the cape. And then for... The top and pants, crepe, sateen, and twill. Yeah, I think these would be okay for the cape 
too, though, I do want to call out when they do something that I like, I will call that out too. Not just the stuff that I don't like, but I do like how they attempted to separate these. Like these are suitable for the cape and these are suitable for the um, pants and top. But I do think we could have expanded upon the cape. I think these could be included in the cape one as well. Um, lining fabric and lightweight fusible interfacing. So the cape is also interfaced. Let's see how much interfacing. One and three quarter yards for the cape. And then, yeah, okay. So the almost the entire cape is interfaced, I think. Oh, actually, maybe not. Because it could just be the button band cut on grain for, like, the interfacing has grain too. That would take up a good chunk of interfacing. And then the collar is probably interfaced as well. So maybe it's not interfaced, which is why in order to get this, like, billowy kind of look you need a fabric that has this much body if you do something super lightweight it's just gonna fall in on you and look like it's not gonna stand away from the body like this that said though these are not the only fabrics that do that um so yeah I don't know this feels like they want it to be like a like a dress up kind of thing which is fine, but I don't have any place in my life for that. Okay, so snaps, bias tape, invisible zipper, hook and eye, grow grain ribbon. That's it. And then here's our size range. Um, no finished garment measurements online. But from what I can tell, close fitting pants, close fitting top. When you do get those finished garment measurements, you should be in the two, three inches of ease range on them. And then this one's going to just be very large. So base that on your upper bust measurement. Okay. All right. Here is a Mrs. and women's shirt. So let's check out the sizes on this one. Same thing. Hmm. Hmm. <laughs> All right. I've said what I had to say about that, so I'm not gonna. <laughs> I'm not gonna jump back on that soapbox. Semi-fitted shirts have neck band, collar, face yoke, front and back darts, front button closure, long set-in sleeves ending in button cuffs, with placket opening and buttoned sleeved tabs and stitched hems. So just another interesting take on a button-down shirt. I do think this is really cool and very interesting and a very like uh, basics with a twist that, you know, I, that's my personal, like if I could call my style anything, it would be basics with a twist. Um, this is definitely that. Um, I'm not sure about it for me specifically though, because I'm just not a button down kind of girl, but I mean with leggings, I don't know, maybe, maybe it could be some fun way to dress up something that's inherently very dressed down and that's leggings like it's like a tunic though I think that's what's throwing me is that it's tunic length and I just don't really wear tunics this print is just absolutely not good <laughs> there's a simple linen I love that very beautiful and simple it is pretty I do like this I, if someone came to me and said I want to make this I would be gong-ho to help them make it pretty design. Let's see the back. Thank you. So just a yoke. Um, I don't think, yeah, no gathers back here to add any extra ease. Oh, but we have some seaming right here. A big long dart to give some shape to the waist. Appreciate that. As always with women's patterns, the shoulder length is way too long. You can see this one dropping off her shoulder by about an inch. I just want to pull that up to so it sits right here. Um, they just don't take an account that that plus size women's shoulders are rounder. They don't come out and down like straight size women do. And this has been, a, I've seen this as an issue from the beginning. Um, it's never been anywhere, anything different for them. 
it's always an issue, I guess is my point. This, this pattern is not unique to that. Because look, do you see hers? Hers is not dropping down off her shoulder because her body is just shaped differently and they don't take that into account for the women's sizes. I don't really understand the point of doing a women's pattern if you're not going to pay attention to such a small detail. Not even a small detail. It's like obvious, but like shoulder length. If you're not even going to adjust for shoulder length, then I mean, what are we doing? I swear I'm not in a bad mood today. <laughs> yeah, these are really beautiful fisheye darts. I really love those. All right. So you're going to be able to see those here. Yeah, I'm a big, big, big fan of fisheye darts for sure. So chambray, that might be what the pink one is actually, chambray and not linen. Chambray, charmeuse, linen blends, and poplin. Yeah, obviously if you wanted a crispier look, I could definitely see it in a white shirting to give that structure, crisp, clean vibe. Um, and then fusible interfacing, 13 buttons, and ribbon for an inside tie. So this comes over here, ties on the side, like an actual wrap. I wonder what it would look like if you extended this on these side seams down to make a dress. That could be cool and you wouldn't need that much more fabric, maybe another eight or 10 inches. That could be fun and unique. Okay, finished garment measure, I mean, yeah, uh, sorry. Pattern ease wise, we have three, six and a half in the bust. That's still so much. And then 10 in the waist, way too much. Way, way, way too much. Even for an oversized, and it's not oversized. It's supposed to fit. Let me see the front. Okay. Okay. The waist does have that much ease in it, I think. May, ugh, the bust, maybe not. But I wouldn't be scared to size down one, no matter where I fell in the size range. Um... And then maybe even save side seams, be prepared to take them in maybe a little bit more if you want something extra fitted. But yeah, that's, that's a lot of ease. Butterick is like, I think since I've been doing these in the spring, kind of all back to back patterns, the last two or three I've reviewed, I felt like I didn't have much to say about pattern ease. But so far, all these Butterick ones seem to be airing on the side of oversized. Fitted line jackets. Oh, sorry. This is a Mrs. Jacket. 8 to 16 and 18 to 26. Fitted line jackets have princess seams, concealed front zipper closure. They're really into that. Inseam front pockets. They're into that too. Set in sleeves and link variations. View A has long sleeves. View B has seven eighths with pleat and button detail. Oh, I see. Okay. So it's a jacket. This is the little pleated detail, which I actually think is really pretty. Um, yeah, it's a jacket. Okay. It's a springtime jacket for sure. I don't know. It just feels, I don't know. I guess there's just not enough interest to me. This is the only interesting thing about it. And this is reminding me of something. I At first I was going to say lab coat, you know, doctor's coat, but that's not it. It's something else that has this covered button band, or I guess it's a zipper band. Yeah, it's reminding me of some, some profession, but I can't remember, can't put my finger on it. But really pretty, I mean, pretty design. I mean, uh, princess seams, here's the pocket in here. Like I said, there's a zipper inside of this. It is really pretty, it's just not my style. But I can see, like, it almost looks really, it's kind of like Vogue-ish to me. New Vogue, not old Vogue. Um, just very clean, like, Upper East Side. Very kind of, it's like that simple luxury type of 
feel, which isn't a bad thing. It's just not my thing. It might be your thing. You might love it. And I hope if you do, I hope you you still love it after, even if I don't like it, of course, you should absolutely still like what you like. Um, but yeah, just not for me. Brocade, denim, gabardine, linen, and wool blends. Yeah, all of your jacketing. Um, did they say, yeah, they said linen. Yeah, anything kind of like structured for a jacket. Lining and then mid-weight fusible. Separating zipper is the only notion. And this will look very close fitting on the model. So yeah, three and a half inches of ease in the bust. That makes sense. The waist has also three and a half. Perfect. And the hip has four and a half. Yes. Okay. That actually makes sense. So when they do their fitted garments, the ease seems appropriate. If it's anything remotely loose fitting, it's like they just go ham and they're just like, there's only close fitting and very loose fitting. <laughs> there's like, where's the middle ground? Okay. Next. Lounge set by Palmer Plush. Okay, if you're not familiar, Palmer Plush are the people who do the tissue fitting method. Um, I've tried it. I think you really need an extra set of hands in order to really master it. Um, because I, when I've done it, I've done it on my ditto form, my dress form that's that looks just like my body. Um, and it's much easier that way. When I try to do it on my own, it's it's it it was too difficult. Um, but lots of interesting videos. If you want to like really nerd out about fitting, check out Patty Palmer and this tissue fitting method. There's lots of videos that you can find on it. It's really interesting. Pajama set or lounge set being this like hyper focused on fitting feels a little bit like, I don't know if it's that necessary that this fits exactly perfectly, but maybe it's one of those things that's like, you you experiment on it because it doesn't really matter. You know what I mean? Okay, so straight wrap. Did I do sizing yet? No. 8 to 16. Oh, and then a 14 to 22. They have two sizes that overlap in two different envelopes. Sorry about that. Um, I just muted my laptop so you won't hear the dinging anymore. Anyways, two sizes that overlap. I, I'd never see that. I almost wonder if that's like a mistake on the internet, <laughs> but that's really interesting if that's the case, because it would make it, you know, really easy to, to grade between sizes, especially if you're making this thing, this is your entire body here, all in one pattern piece. There's not a waist seam to be seen. Straight wrap, straight wrap dress and top have bands, darts, tie closure, and can be long sleeve or sleeveless straight legged pants have elastic waist and stitched hems. Okay. So this is the dress. I mean, she hardly looks like she's lounging to me unless she's lounging in a bar lounge. This lady looks a little bit more loungy. This is definitely giving hospital gown vibes. But they put her in a high heel, too. I'm not lounging in high heels, guys. And then these look like actual outfits. So maybe they're calling it a loungewear. That calling it a loungewear set is really not doing this a whole lot of justice. These are outfits. Okay. Okay, yep. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Here she is again. Here's the back. Yeah, simple straight back, no yoke, no seams that I can see. Oh, wait, there's one right here. So maybe there's some kind of something happening here. I'll look at the line drawings in a second. Oh, how about right now? <laughs> okay. Yeah, so there is some sort of fisheye dart situation happening here. Here, look at the big ones. Yeah. I don't think that means that there's two sets of them. There might be, though. Maybe there are. It's just too hard to tell in this print. 
Okay, so fabric require or fabric suggestions: Shally, chambray, crepe, double knits, linen, and soft cottons. Hmm. Yeah, I mean, I definitely think you could. I mean, you could probably make this out of just about any light to mid weight woven, but certainly the pants could be its own category of fabric. The top could have its own category. The dress could have its own category. You know what I'm saying? But I mean, there are six options here. That is, that's a lot of pattern in one pattern. A lot of options, a lot of choices in one pattern. Very interesting. Okay, so no finished garments here, finished garment measurements here on this one. So, okay. Next, this is what I love about Butterick is the kind of wardrobe patterns. Now this is another Palmer plush. So maybe they're just leaning more into that, like multiple patterns in one, but this is a entire wardrobe, jacket, top, dress, and pants. And you can mix and match these as much as you want and get a ton of different combinations of outfits. It's like a capsule wardrobe all in one pattern. Sizing is 8 to 16 and then 16 to 24. This is probably what the other one is. Um, I've never seen them overlap by two. But maybe it's not, but I'm going to, I bet money that maybe this is what it's supposed to be and the other thing is an error. Jacket has front patch pockets, collar and top stitching, slim fit knit top, and dress have raglan sleeves and band. Pants D and E have fly front, back darts, and contoured waistband with hooks and eye. View D is capri length with side slits. Okay. Oh, it's like a boat neck situation. Interesting. And then these are E pants, and these are the capris. A little t-shirt dress. Really pretty. The coat, and then here's the whole like business situation. The collar on the coat is really interesting. Probably not my favorite. Drop shoulder, maybe. Yeah, the whole coat itself feels a little slouchy, which I guess could be cool. This is the real winner here. This looks amazing. That's a really nice t-shirt dress. I think it's because it's wide and long. That's what's making it look unproportional, disproportionate. Is that the word? Um, I would crop it like a lot. And then you can still have that boxy shape, but you don't lose your entire body. Oh yeah, and here's a, oh boy, my bad, hold on. Coming back. Here's a great look at the neckline on this top. Raglan sleeve. And then this, I gotta imagine this is not for the faint of heart to execute. Because this, see how it's like still sitting on her body? It looks gorgeous, it looks beautiful, it's drafted very well. I just got to imagine that's a little bit challenging to sew. Yeah, which is maybe why there's this situation. I don't think that's a fit issue. I think it's a construction issue. It is a really pretty design, though. I like this one. Yeah, that top is really, really interesting. Yeah, the rest of it, mm, I don't know. Okay. See, we get so many pictures, almost too many pictures. Where's the middle ground? <laughs> Where's the middle ground? Yeah, I don't know. I really like it. Hmm. 
Yeah, there might be something funky going on with this sleeve. Too much fabric um, under the arm's eye. But I'm not mad at it. Of all things that could go wrong, that's not that big a deal. Well, I don't know, though. I say that, but then this is Palmer plush. This is, like, the fitting people. So it should kind of fit perfectly. If you're going to hang your hat on, like, an entire fitting method, that's when I can be a little bit grumpy about it, I guess. But I'll let that one slide. So fabrics for A, D, and E, the jacket and the pants, are gabardine, lightweight poplin, linen. Makes purple, perfect sense. And then for the top and dress, knit fabrics, like jersey knit. Yes. All of that is great. Okay. A zipper and hook and eye is all you need, and that's just for the pants. Here's our size range, and finish, finish garment measurements are not on the internet. I know that they can't fit all the information on the pattern envelope, but for those people that do search ex or shop exclusively on the internet, can you put like a little extra chart or something? Like maybe down here, there would be line art and then there would be finished garment measurements. I don't know, just thinking out loud. Okay, what am I doing? I need to go back. Unisex shirts, shorts, and pants. So another combo, three patterns in one. Shirts, shorts, and pants, although shorts and pants are probably the same pattern, <laughs> just cropped. Loose fitting camp collar shirt has forward shoulder seams, patch pockets with buttoned flaps, side slits, stitched hems, and sleeve length variation. Loose fitting pleated shorts or pants sit below waist, have fly front zipper, side seam pockets, belt loops, back patch pockets, and stitched hems. Okay. Forward shoulder, camp collar, button front, patch pocket, his and hers, long sleeves or short sleeves, actually long sleeve with a cuff or short sleeves, and then this little pleated short or pant. Now, pulling off a unisex pant pattern is interesting because, as we know, Men need room where women don't need room. So I'm wondering how they're getting around that. And if the women's are all going to look like, you know, there's a lot of extra fabric here. In ready to wear, they're calling it like boyfriend style pants where you have that all that extra ease. So it's almost like an intentional thing. Or I wonder if when you get into the pattern, they have different cut lines for women and men's in the crotch line. I don't, I don't really know where, how they're going about this. Either just saying, yep, it's the same for everybody and the women are going to have extra fabric. Or no, we've, we've figured out that we're going to do different cutting lines. Um... Any more? Give me the waistband. Give me the waistband. Yeah, that's not looking super promising. Um, I can't really tell where it's coming from or where it's going, nor can I really tell how she's standing. I mean, his looks super, super baggy, too. Yeah. Um, I Again, my trust issues are coming out. And I'm not sure how these pants are going to fit, like, at all. They're not showing us really anything in the areas that matter. I'm assuming they're just lo really loose-fitting throughout. That's my best guess. And then these sleeve openings, what's going on? His are like, you could tell they had a hard time easing that one in. And then same with hers. Hers almost look gathered. So it's like the sleeve is too flat for this opening. Which would make sense because all I want to do is pull this up on her shoulder anyways. How was his? Yeah, men, similar to plus size women, have that rounded quality to their shoulders. Whereas straight size women have it a little bit more angled. So this looks okay on him. I just think that... 
there's too much fabric in the sleeve head. Yeah, okay. And again, no finished garment measurements here, but they are recommending broadcloth chambray, rayon batiste, that's awfully specific. Okay, and then for the pants and shorts, twill, lightweight denim. But also, I mean, I can think of like chino, linen, linen blends, even cotton blends, any bottom weight. Okay, so then buttons, buttons, and a zipper. Also, alphanumeric sizing. This is so interesting. I'm not quite sure how these are going to fit anybody. Um, and no finished garment measurements, so I can't even tell. I mean, if you look at the line drawings, and the line drawings actually mimic the pattern pieces, it's just very straight, right? Which for men, that makes sense. But for women, I mean, I don't know. I don't know how much work it would be to get this. You'd have to just lean into it being like a, like a boyfriend fit. It, that's, that's my best advice for you. If you want like a, a women's like cool short that's made for a woman, you'd have to just get another pattern. This one might just be, I, cause see, I can even tell they have this belt on her. Who knows how much that's cinching her in to hold it up. You know, they might be doing a lot of cheating here to get this to fit right, which might be where those drag lines are coming from on the back photo. So it could be cute. It could be a disaster. I'm on the fence. Okay, so Catherine Tilton is giving us this top pattern. This is very Catherine Tilton coded. She loves to do asymmetry. She loves to do print mixing, color blocking, and all that kind of stuff. For, to have one brown sleeve and one green sleeve, that's for sure her right up her alley. Um, sizing is all in one, extra small to 2X. Tunic tops have sleeveless or three quarter sleeve options. Details include a lower front band, back go day, which is this, and banded neckline and handkerchief hemline. Top B has contrast. Okay. So it's. From the looks of it, a pretty standard top pattern, knit top pattern, I think, um, with just some like funky color blocking. But then you get to the back. I'll go back to these photos in a second. Oh, yeah. Then you go to the back and you have this little cool cutout thing. This is up my alley. I'm digging this. And then I wanted to point out too, all of this here, she's got her hand on her hip, so it's going to be really hard to tell, but like, I'll show you, I think the line drawing should show the shape of this is actually going to come out and down. So I don't know, just gives a really cool, fun, funky vibe to something that's typically very boring. And I'm pretty sure this is just a stitched extra band. So if you wanted to have it cropped a little bit, you could just leave that off or obviously do cut line and make all this shorter. I think it would also be really cool long. But yeah, I can totally get behind this. They've styled it here with both with like a pencil pant capri type thing, but which I guess that does make the most sense for their kind of woman. Um, you know, but a legging would be cool. I'm also, pic I always picture these tunics as dresses. So I'm also picturing it as a really fun dress with maybe like one of those patchwork print patterns. So you can kind of see here all of the stuff that's happening. Yeah. Okay. So let's look at those line drawings first. See what I mean? How it comes out and then down out and then down. Super interesting, right? Yeah, this is cool. Okay, so stretch knits only, cotton knit, jersey knit, that, right, that's it. 
Um, you can yeah, you can try with the rayons, but man, with all those stitched hems, you would be probably cursing yourself. So try something a little bit more structured, um, for sure. Finished garment measurements on the bust. We have roughly seven inches at the bust. That feels like a lot. At the waist and hip, I know there's going to be a bunch, but at the bust, seven inches? No, I think maybe five again. Five, four, something like that. Base it on your upper bust measurement and then maybe size down. Okay, next line, we have a another Palmer plush. My gosh, the girls were busy this, this time. Shirt dress with sleeve variations. Sizing, 8 to 16, 16 to 24. Classic shirt dress has bust darts, front waist darts, back darts, and sleeve variations. Yeah, cute little, this one, like cute little 90s print with the sneaker, so cute. This is a little bit, it's just a lot, a lot happening. Long sleeve, long dress, long, long, long. Like she just loses her body in there, I think. This one with the little short sleeve and the popped collar and a little 70s vibe. That's cute. Maybe this one because the fabric choice and because it's kind of like big on her. That's why it's feeling a little like, like she looks like she's just so tiny in there. Like you can't see any of it. Oh, look at that. Look at all that ease. Like her body probably ends right here. This is probably her, the shape of her body here. And then that her little hip comes out. This is huge on her. She's swimming. I mean, and you know, I'm always going to give them the benefit of the doubt and say maybe their usual fit model got sick and couldn't come in and they had to find this woman last minute. But wow, that is really, really big. And it didn't say classic fit shirt dress. Classic fit to mean means fitted. Oh, and no even no line drawings on this one. Okay. All right. So we can see from here though. Well, these look this looks very roomy. I was picturing something a lot more fitted, especially with all of these fit lines, like all the fisheye darts, all the seaming. I guess you can make it however you like. Maybe you like things that are a little bit more loose fitting. This would be perfect for you as is, or you can take it in some. But it just felt like for it to be so big, so long, long sleeves, you're just like hiding. Um, cotton and cotton blends, crepe, double knits, gabardine linen, and they're recommending, yeah, all structured fabrics, nothing really lightweight. I think you could definitely broaden your horizons on this and make it out of something like a rayon, um, and make it a little bit more drapey, for sure. Eight buttons are all you need. Okay, so they're saying six and a half inches of ease in the bust, and I believe it. I believe that's what they have there. If you want to know what six and a half inches of ease in the bust looks like, it's this. So when we talk about those other patterns before that had that much, but the the fin the model didn't look like it was that big, this is what that actually looks like. That's what six inches of ease looks like. And then, oops, and then in the waist we have um twenty four a oh, with or without front darts. Interesting. So if you're an apple shape, okay, that makes this a lot more interesting to me that it would be made with that much thought to body shape. But if you make it with the darts, you've got another five and a half inches of ease in the waist. And then in the hip, you've got seven and no, six and a half. Six and a half. And again, all of that makes sense. That's exactly what that 
that amount of ease looks like. My best guess, anyways, from what I can see. Okay, another Palmer plush pattern. My goodness. These are wide leg trouser and crop pants, have contour waistband, fly front zipper, slash pockets, front pleat detail, and back darts. Okay, how, oh, hold on, look at the sizing really quickly. This is 8 to 16, and then 18 to 26, so no crossover here. But they do go an extra size bigger. Okay, how many of you who have seen my patterns, my, my pattern reviews before, know what I'm about to say? Say with me now, hands in pockets. I hate photos with hands in the pockets because I can't see how the pockets are going to lay when you're standing there or lie. But maybe we'll get some other pictures without them. Um, contoured waistband, which is good because this is sitting high up on her body where there are more curves. Actually, that's wrong. It should be a straight waistband if it's high-waisted and a curvier waistband if it's low-waisted. So it looks like they are doing maybe an inch or so below the natural waist. That's not my favorite way to wear pants. Um, just because I carry a lot of, like, my, I get a lot of bloating. And it's just like, anyways, I don't need to go into all that detail with you guys. But I have, I have, um some autoimmune diseases that don't that don't agree with waistbands cutting right across my belly. Um, so I prefer a high-waisted pan. I think it's more flattering on me anyways. Um, so if this is sitting one inch below the waist, you would need a slight curved contoured waistband, nothing crazy. If it gets low-waisted, then it gets even more curvy because you have even more curves there. So straight, slight curve, a little bit more curve. I do like the pleats. I love the wide leg. I love the wide leg crop. Yeah, this is fine. Oh. Yowza. Well, that's probably the shirt, okay? I'm going to say this is the shirt for sure. This is just a lot of butt eating. Her butt is eating up this fabric. There's too much fabric there, which I know is counterintuitive. You look at it and you think that there's not enough fabric there because it looks like a wedgie. But in fact, it's it means there's too much fabric. So whatever shape of a crotch line they have here isn't correct. And they either need to scoop it out. Don't be mad, non-scoopers. It's an option, okay? You can either scoop it out or adjust it to make the shape a little flatter. Okay. <laughs> However you want to look at it. Um, other than that, though, it looks pretty good. And unfortunate that somebody there couldn't just like flatten this out a little bit. Yep. Same thing for her. Not so much happening here, um, but the same fabric eating, butt eating fabric situation. Yep. I don't, this is like playing tricks on my eyes. Sorry, I got so quiet for so long. I'm just like looking at this where it looks like that's her butt the fullness of her butt is down here, but on this one, it's over here. Is that just some... We I don't, they don't Photoshop, do they? I can imagine they spend a lot of time Photoshopping. I'm going to say something just... Well, I was going to say maybe the way she's standing, but she's not even like really popping a hip or a knee. I don't know. That is freaking me out. It's just, something's not right here. I don't think this is the way her body looks. Something about the angle, or maybe if they did do some editing, they went too far. I don't know. Um, okay, so great. Uh, crepe, gabardine, linen, poplin, wool, and wool types are the recommendations. Yeah, all your bottom weights. One zipper and a hook and bar. And then your waist, it doesn't say anything about where it sits on the waist. It should in the pattern instructions. You'd have to look for it, but it should be there. 
waist would be one and a half inches. That makes perfect sense. And then the hip would be 10 or 11 inches. Again, that makes sense for something with that many pleats. Okay, now we have this Mrs. Dress. Uh, sizing is alphanumeric, all in one, extra small to 2X, can be worn as a dress or a day cover up. What does that mean? A swimsuit cover up? What's a day cover up? Tiered hem dress, fitted through bust, have front and back neck facings, bust darts, view A has button front sleeveless with self bias armhole facings. View B has concealed snap front closure. They do really like that this time. Um, short flared sleeves and purchased trim. Oh, so you have the square neckline facing. Those are kind of fun to sew. A little bit difficult, but not too bad. Button front or concealed sleeveless with your tears. Now this and this don't look alike at all. It's like there's not enough, like this bottom panel wasn't wide enough. Like they gathered it too much. And then the little flutter sleeve. Yeah, maybe if it weren't in the white fabric, I don't know. Maybe also it... It's a little too long through here. It should be like if it's at her natural waist is like right here, maybe. Can you see where it's like kind of naturally wanting to maybe? I just feel like proportions with this collection are off almost throughout. Like when things are really wide, they should be shorter. When things are fitted, they can be longer. And this dress is a perfect example of how like it's a simple design, but if you don't have those horizontal lines in a proper place, it can just throw off the look just a little bit. There's nothing wrong with this design at all. We've seen it a thousand times, but something about this version is just not, yeah, I'm just not loving it. And normally this kind of thing would be something I would like. Like I like the line drawings a lot. I just don't know if it's their execution or something. Fabric choice could be it. They recommend cotton blends, cotton flannel, lightweight broadcloth, rayon chalet, and sateen. I think that's what they use, sateen. It's also a very structured fabric, even a lightweight sateen. Um, so you're not really getting that flowy quality of a gather. Like in my mind, sateen is more suitable for pleats. Ten buttons, ten sew on snaps, and then lace trim if you choose. We've got somewhere between four and a half or three and a half inches of ease in the bust. And then the waist has six inches. Six or six or wait, five or six. That's still kind of a lot, but not by a not by a ton. It's not like overwhelmingly like whoa. Uh, but it is still very roomy. It says fitted through bust. That amount of ease, what did I say? Five, six inches is not fitted through bust. So then now I do say it's way too much ease. It needs to be closer. If it's truly fitted through bust, then it's two to three inches. Okay, tunic and jeans. Okay, they might finally redeem themselves. All right, this is... 8 to 16 and 18 to 26 on the size range. Very loose fitting. See? Very loose fitting. So you're going to expect double digits of ease. Pullover tunic has stand-up collar, neckline gathers, front slit neck opening, raglan sleeves ending in button cuffs with continuous lap opening and stitched hems. Fitted bootcut jeans have contoured waistband. Pockets, belt loops, back yoke, fly zipper, contrast, heavy duty thread, top stitching, and length variations. This top is so cool. Again, I'd probably lengthen it to be a dress because I'm just a dress girly. I can't help myself. I'm not going to ever wear a tunic over pants. So I'm either going to crop it to make it a top or I'm going to lengthen it to make it a dress. 
but yeah, the stand-up collar, the V, the big voluminous sleeve with the pleating. I prefer this shorter sleeve, but the long one's cool too. Now, the drawing has the pants being long. I can't remember if they said there were two lengths or not, but hers is definitely cropped. Cute outfit all together. And look at this. We get a picture of the pants without the top on. Thank you. This is a very low rise. Look how little that zipper is. It's probably like a four or five inch zipper. But, you know, the girlies are liking the low rise these days. So this waistband would need to be a lot more contoured than the last one we looked at simply because it's lower on the body. But hands in pockets. Like, I know models know what to do with your hands. There's more than this pose. Cute, though. See how much happier she looks, too? Their faces will tell you a lot about what's going on. Yeah, the fit of these are great. I'm never going to wear low-rise pants, or I should say ever again. I didn't know any better the first time they came around. Now I do. But if you like a low-rise pant, these are good. If you want to make it high-rise, it's not that hard. This yoke is like one and a half inches tall. Just make the yoke three inches taller. Flatten out the waistband, and then you would have it be a little bit more high-waisted. Not difficult at all. But yeah, the fit is really good really good okay oh yeah and there are two links on the pants okay good so for the tops cotton shirting linen blends poppin uh sorry poplin sateen sateen again might be a little too much cotton shirting really is the way to go for that structured look a linen blend if it's like blended with rayon um would be a little bit drapier fall in a little bit closer to the body if it's blended with cotton maybe it would have a little bit more of that easy breezy shirting look i'm surprised they didn't recommend gauze i'm surprised they didn't recommend um, what would be some other good choices i wouldn't go anything too drapey because then you just lose the sleeve altogether but so that that light well the heavier side of lightweight to that mid-weight sort of structured woven is going to be your best bet then for the pants Denim and stretch wovens. Now, you say stretch woven. Is it also stretch denim? Because those two things are not created equal. I have to imagine it's a stretch denim. I wish that they would tell you how much stretch the denim needs. Because there's some that have like a ton of lycra in them. Will stretch a bunch. And then some that won't. So that's going to be a bit of a guessing game that will determine fit, but if you can get it right and get them to look like the samples that they made, I mean, pretty good looking, I think. All right, you need some lining fabric for your pocket bags, lightweight fusible, buttons, and a zipper. How? Yeah, a five inch zipper, and then top stitching thread. Finished garment measurements are gonna be in the pattern. Okay. That's that. I love that. That is probably the only one out of all of these. Um, these are dolls, and then Retro Butterick is usually pretty sad. I'll take a quick look. Extra small to large. Vintage 70s wrap and go skirt. Yeah, it's this, right? Like, I mean. nothing special <laughs> um they did make it midi length i bet it really is easy wrap and go i don't know if you need a pattern for that though you know can't you just i don't know maybe it would be easier to do with the pattern i say that to myself like i like to sit around here and draft my own patterns i don't i like to use patterns even when they're simple like this. But that would be one, like, that could be like a really cute, actually, now that I'm looking at this, this could be a really great tried and true. You could use up a lot of different fabrics. It works, what did they suggest? Broadcloth, chalet, chambray, double knits, mid-weight crepe, muslin. I mean, I can genuinely 
make this out of anything from the lightweight drapey category all the way up to the midweight structured woven category. You could also do knits, but you'd want to the waistband to be a woven probably or interface the knit to make it not as stretchy. So in that, for those reasons, maybe this is worth picking up just because it's so simple, so easy to sew, you'd knock out a whole bunch of them. This little wrap and go dress, however, <laughs> I don't know. I, it just looks like a grandma's house coat. And maybe that's because that's what my grandma wore, my father's mother, but I, I don't know about this. Um, 70s wrap and go dress. This is what the line drawing looks like. Oh no, they're only showing us the back. So it's got these like wing things that come out. Maybe they'll show us on the other one. Semi fitted sleeveless wrap dress has scoop neckline purchase fold over braid finish extending into front ties. So kind of like an extended bias binding. Easy, only three main pattern pieces, no buttons, no zippers, no saps. Just slip it on, wrap and tie in front and you're all set to go. Yeah. Oh man. I don't know. Maybe the floral is not it. And the contrast is not it. Maybe I just love box plaid and gingham. This one's not, I'm not hating this one is what I'm saying. It could go like hospital gown, house coat. It could go all that way very quickly. So just be mindful of colors and prints. But it does have some darting here. This might be a little bit long on her still. Maybe it needs to come up here somewhere. Yeah, hers looks really long too. So pretty universally too long in the bodice. No, they're not going to show you the, the design. It's basically like you slip it over your head and you have these little wing things that come out and then you tie those. Um, soft or crisp fabrics such as chalet, gingham, jersey, lightweight double knits, polished cotton, polyester double knits, seersucker, seurat, like literally again, the lightweight woven drapies all the way up to the midweight sort of stable ones. And then no usable, no helpful finished garment measurements. So, okay, buttery on the vintage. I can get behind both of those. But in general, my overall thoughts of this are just when it comes to the fit, it's like, uh, it leaves me, it leaves me in a state of confusion, which leads to fear, which leads to like, I'm not going to buy it. Um, if I feel like I'm going to spend a lot of time forcing something to work, I'd rather not, especially with designs like these that aren't that special. Um, but all in all, I do like this one lengthened to a dress. Maybe this one isn't terrible. I did like this one a lot. I liked the dress version of this a lot. And I like this one the most 10 out of 10 on this one. I can definitely see myself getting that one and making it, um, even in the fall probably, but let me know what you guys think of the Butterick collection. I know I was kind of maybe a little more negative than positive on this one, but I just, the, the fit things really get me because you guys don't see that like other people do, like I do, like more seasoned sewists or people in the actual um, fashion industry would see it. And I hate when people go to make something they think is going to fit like this and then it fits like, you know, three sizes too big. So I get a little bit eh, about that, but let me know what you guys thought. Maybe you think the designs redeem the fitting issues you might run into. Let me know. Sound off. Which ones were your favorite? Um, do you agree with me about the fit? Do you, like, just let me know everything you're thinking. Um, but that's going to do it for me today. I will see you all very soon. Bye.